So Ian, why are you standing for Unite General Secretary? I think members are facing a massive level of attacks from employers on our jobs and our paying conditions and also from the government in terms of public services and on our rights. And I think though we've got an immense amount to be proud of in Unite, it is falling a long way short of the union we need. My background has been, I've been a workplace activist for the last 25 years, struggling at the coalface, trying to tackle all these issues. And uh, I share the experiences and frustrations of members trying to uh, get things done. I think as well I've disagreed with a couple of the key political stances that uh, Len McCluskey's taken. So for example on Trident I think it was a mistake to uh, uh, argue for spending 205 billion on weapons of mass destruction uh, when I think that would have made far more jobs and been far more socially useful to have a million climate jobs, to have council housing uh, and many other things that would be socially useful. And similarly on freedom of movement, uh, I think uh, Gerard Coyne's speech where he talked about immigration putting pressure on the NHS was a disgrace. Um, there's n the NHS couldn't survive a day without uh, migrant workers and I thought Len McCluskey simply fudged the issue and I thought it was important that there was a voice in this election speaking up for the issues affecting members in the workplace and in our communities um, and uh, putting a clear left position. So Ian, what do you think about the attacks on Jeremy Corbyn and Unite? I think it's been an absolute disgrace. We've got the Labour right uh, attacking uh, Jeremy Corbyn yet again, yet another plot, uh, yet another attempted coup, and attacking Unite in the process, uh, calling into question our democratic processes. And of course, these are the very people who are backing Gerard Coyne, the right-wing candidate in this election. They have the cheek to talk about left-wing plots, and they're the ones plotting. You've got Mandelson, who brags about working every day to try and remove uh, Jeremy Corbyn. These are the people who are doing the real plotters. And I think the idea that turning the clock back to new Labour would in any way help Labour is an absolute joke. This approach was rejected at the last two general elections. Uh, new Labour eroded Labour space over decades and where that approach has been continued, such as in Scotland, it's done more than erode it, it's almost destroyed it. But I think we need to change how we're supporting uh, Corbyn. I think Len McCluskey's been wrong to undermine him on key policy issues such as Trident and free movement and I think he's been wrong not to speak out in defence of him uh, after the Copeland by-election defeat. The reality is if we had any Labour leader pursuing policies that we want for our members, um, then they'd be facing massive attacks from the establishment, whether that was Jeremy Corbyn or whether that was anybody else. Of course the employers, of course the Tories, of course most of the press, and of course most of the backbench of the uh, Parliamentary Labour Party are going to oppose any attempt to stand up for the 99% and not the 1%. The reality is most of the Labour backbenchers are so out of touch with the people they're supposed to represent that they couldn't even bring themselves to vote against the Tories' welfare bill. So I think we need to have a much more serious support that goes beyond just backing uh, Corbyn in internal Labour Party elections and where we're actually picking up a fight in, in the workplaces and in the communities over the issues of concern to our members, shifting the political debate away from the plotting and scheming in the Westminster bubble, the kind of things that uh, the hypocrite coin who claims to be wanting to spend less time on politics but spends all his time actually plotting with his, the Labour right move it away from their agenda and onto the things members really care about. And those are the things where I think Corbyn is really popular. Ian, you've made equality a central issue in your campaign. Can you explain? Uh, there's two particular issues that I've uh, picked out. One is about freedom of movement. I thought it was disgraceful uh, that at the start of the year Gerard Coyne made a speech claiming that immigration was putting pressure on the NHS. The reality is that without immigrants the NHS couldn't last a day. And I was very angry after the referendum when I think Len McCluskey just fudged the issue completely. I think it's a workers' rights issue. I think all of us should have the freedom to go where we please to be treated equally wherever we go. Another issue that I've picked up strongly has been about the sexism within Unite. We can't be trusted to take up sexism effectively with employers when we're not doing it within our own ranks. Uh, I published the report on the sexism, bullying and harassment experienced by women officers employed by Unite, and I think that issue goes much wider than that. I think more generally we need to improve how we integrate our equalities work with a wider industrial agenda. Sometimes there's a tendency to treat it like an optional extra rather than a core industrial issue. The reality is almost every uh, issue we deal with as trade unionists has an equality dimension. So whether you're talking about appraisals, performance management, sickness absence management, redundancy selection, wherever there's an element of management discretion you find discrimination. And I think not only if we're too weak on those issues, not only do we uh, do people an injustice by not challenging the 
discrimination, but we miss an opportunity to challenge employers on those issues for the benefit of all members. So for example, in my own workplace, we're currently running a campaign around pay inequality, and we've been able to highlight the uh, uh, differences there are on gender, or age and disability um, in relation to pay and pay reviews. And what we're trying to do with that is not just end that discrimination, but break open a pay system that's unfair for absolutely everybody. So I think there's some fantastic work on equality being done in Unite, but I do think we need to spread that much wider. We need to make that a core part of our, our industrial agenda, and I've put forward a series of proposals to make that happen. Ian, how do you think the union could be strengthened? Well, I think many uh, members are frustrated at how difficult it is to get things, uh, get things to happen in the union. And unlike the other two candidates who've been at the top of the union for decades, I, I've been active in the workplace experience in that first hand. So I think we could do things to improve communication, for example, which is patchy and uneven. I think it's ridiculous um, that it, basically if you're on uh, some committees or if you happen to have a good officer uh, who isn't on holiday or off sick, then you might get kept in the loop. But for the rest of us, uh, a lot of the time it's potluck as to whether you find out what's going on. And I don't think that's good enough. So, for example, we've recently been on strike in my workplace and it was very difficult to get the information out about that to other activists to make sure that we were getting support uh, when we really needed it. Uh, I think we should have a fortnightly email bulletin that goes direct to every activist letting them know what's going on in the union. Whenever any group of members has a serious issue, it should feel like you've got a million members behind you, not like you're being left on your own. I think another example is around the use of case studies. It's too hard to find out about the great work that's being done in the Unite. So at the moment, in my employer, we're facing 1,800 UK job cuts. A lot of those are to do with offshoring. What we found is that uh, we asked around inside the Unite structures for examples of where Unite's members had fought good campaigns against offshoring to try and save jobs. And through the official Unite structures, we found nothing. Eventually, on the grapevine, we managed to find some great examples from another sector of where members have done a successful campaign against offshoring. And uh, we, they were good enough to write it up for us. We were able to share that with members. And, of course, that made me people much more confident uh, to try and fight for, fight for their jobs. Now, I think that should be made much more systematic. We should make sure we write up case studies of where members have successful campaigns, not just what they won, but how they won it. Uh, to make sure that we're not spend, spending time reinventing the wheel, or worse still, failing to reinvent the wheel. I also think we need to experiment a lot more with different methods of organising. One of the things I've been trying to promote in Greater Manchester is the idea of a minimum standards campaign. So, for example, why couldn't we set a minimum standard that might be, for example, uh, uh, everybody being paid at least the living wage, no zero-hours contracts, whatever people felt in the area was appropriate, and then have workplaces opting in to pay into a strike fund specifically to support that campaign. And then members could select particular workplaces to take out on strike in support of those demands on full pay. Can you imagine if we won two or three strikes in a city uh, or an area in a short space of time over those kind of demands, it would be all over the press, members would be queuing up to join. I think there's lots of examples of fantastic work being done across Unite, but we need to make sure we're encouraging that spirit of experimentation. Carrying on doing the same things isn't good enough. We've got 20 million people we need to recruit into trade unionism. We've got people who are badly represented or unrepresented, and we need to make sure we're building up the strength of, strength of the union to win more. So Ian, some people worry that supporting you might split the left vote and let Coyne in. How do you respond? I think people are right to worry about Gerard Coyne. He's an awful candidate. He stands for turning the clock back to the failed policies of the past, the kind of partnership approach with em employers where we're cozying them up to them and delivering little for members on the one hand and then politically looking towards a kind of new Labour approach that was such a disaster for members. So uh, I can understand why people worry about it, but I do think it's a worry that isn't justified. So if Len McCluskey was genuinely worried about the threat from the right, he wouldn't have forced this unnecessary election in the first place. But I think more fundamentally, um, we need to have a positive voice for how the union could be stronger. More of the same just isn't good enough uh, when we're facing massive attacks from employers and government. And I think we've got so much in common between the other candidates. They both support Trident. They both want to continue seeing uh, officers appointed rather than being elected and accountable to members. We've got plenty of people at the top of the union who know what it's like to be at the top of the union who have that experience, but we don't have anybody at the top of the union who's got recent experience of being at the grassroots and trying to make change in the union. So my campaign, whatever the result of the election, is trying to shake things up and actually put on the agenda the things we need to have a stronger and more effective union. And Ian, how do you see the choice for some Unite members? 
I think it's a very clear choice. You've got Len McCluskey offering more of the same. So we've got a massive gap between the union we need and the scale of the attacks we're facing from employers and government. On the other hand, we've got Gerard Coyne, who's offering to turn the clock back to the failed methods of the past, both industrially, where he favours a more partnership approach, uh, which uh, delivers little for members, and politically, where he wants to return to new Labour after that's been rejected by the electorate on, uh, on two occasions. I think what we need is to shake up the union. I've put forward practical proposals about how we can strengthen every area of the union's work. I'm the only candidate that's opposed to Trident. I'm the only candidate defending workers' rights to move freely and be treated equally. And I'm the only candidate saying that if I'm elected, I'll stay on my current wage rather than the ridiculous six-figure salary that general secretaries normally get. But uh, wh whoever you decide to vote for, I think it's really important if you agree with what I'm arguing, you get involved in the campaign. Because all real change comes from below and all real change comes from collective action. So get involved and let's shake up the night. Thanks, Ian.